So here I am in Lightroom Classic and I'm in the masking tool. And what I'd like to do is maybe apply curves within a mask to adjust these mountains in the background. So let's create a mask. And I could come in here and try something like just say I want to select an object and I'm going to paint here where the mountains are and give it an idea of what I'm looking for and just see if it happens to be able to deliver a mask of that particular area that I'd like to adjust. And who knows if it's going to be successful or not. I did not test this ahead of time. But I'll do that. And let's see what we get. Not bad. One little spot missing. So I'll just choose Add. And once again, say an object. And this time say I want to add this object right here. Anyway, we're going to call that good enough. That's what I'm going to adjust. Now, the problem is I want to apply curves. And if you look over here at the sliders that are available, curves isn't one of them. But Adobe Camera Raw does have that feature. And Lightroom and Camera Raw use the same code behind the scenes, which means if Adobe Camera Raw has a feature available, Lightroom can support it, even though it might not have the user interface yet to show you that feature. So let's figure out how to take this mask and apply curves to it. Here's how I do it. I'm just going to type Command S. That would be Control S if I was in Windows. And if you look in the upper left, it says Saving Metadata. That means it's saving this mask and all the things I've done to this image to an XMP file that's in the same folder as the original picture. Usually that happens almost instantaneously, and I'm not sure why this isn't finished yet. But that's what it does. Now once that's done, I'm going to go down here to the bottom of my screen. And this is where I find the film strip. And I should see my picture right there. I'm going to click on that picture and I'm going to drag it down here to the bottom of my screen where I have the Mac dock. In there I see Photoshop. I'm just going to drag it on top and let go. That tells it that I want to open the image in Photoshop. But since it's a RAW file, Adobe Camera Raw pops up. Now I'm not sure if you can do something that simple on Windows or not, but somehow drag that to your Photoshop icon. Then, over on the right side of the screen here in Camera Raw, I'm going to click on the mask icon. Then, right there is the mask I created earlier when I was in Lightroom. I'm going to click on it, and unlike when I was in Lightroom, if I look over here at the various sliders available, I have curves, which is not available in Lightroom. So I'm going to click on this little dot here, which will allow me to come over here onto my image. And what I think I'm going to do is click on the dark portion of these mountains. And then I'm going to drag to the left to darken them. And get that nice and dark. Then I'm going to come to the brighter portion of the mountain right here. And I'll click and I'll drag to the right to brighten that up. To add contrast that I wouldn't be able to do if I wasn't using curves. Uh, then somehow I want this change that I've made with curves to actually show up back in uh, Lightroom. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to click open because that would open this image into Photoshop. I'm going to instead click done. And when I do, it's going to update a little file in my hard drive that's describing that change. So I'll just head back down here to Lightroom. And now I have my image, but it doesn't have a change yet. And that's because it doesn't know that Camera Raw made a change. So here's what I need to do is go back down to the film strip. And in the film strip, I need to make sure I have little badges turned on. And you do that by right clicking. And there's a choice in here down at the bottom called View Options. You just need to make sure you have this one turned on called Show Badges. Show Badges is going to display an up pointing arrow if Adobe Camera Raw has made any kind of a change. So if I switch away from this image and then that'll cause it to look on my hard drive to see if there's any change that was made by another program. And right here, do you see this little up pointing arrow? That indicates that there's something saved on my hard drive that Lightroom hasn't loaded in. And all I'm going to do is click on that icon and it'll say, hey, what do you want to do? Do you want to import those settings that we just changed using Adobe Camera Raw? Or do you want to replace them with what's currently here in Lightroom? Well, I want to grab what the settings were on disk. And so I'll click there. And now my image is updated. And if you come here to the mask, which previously did not have an adjustment applied at all, and I go to its little eyeball, I can click it now and you can see it without the curve applied. And I let go and now you can see the effect of the curve.
If I click on the mask to make it active, I can also come over here to the amount slider and lessen the effect if I want, or even make it more pronounced. Uh, the only thing is, uh, when I scroll down, I will not find curves. And that's because Lightroom Classic has the programming knowledge behind the scenes to apply a curve to a mask, but it doesn't have the user interface to let you get to it. So we need to use Adobe Camera Raw instead. So what did we do? We ended up making a mask, and it doesn't matter if you make the mask here in Lightroom or if you make it in Adobe Camera Raw, just somehow get a mask. Then I typed Command S, which is Control S in Windows. That saves those changes to a little tiny file called an XMP file, which is the standard way that Adobe Camera Raw uses to save its settings. Then I came down here, grabbed this file, and I simply dragged it to Photoshop. That tells Photoshop to open the file, and since it's a RAW file, it needs to use Adobe Camera Raw. And I just went to the masking icon, I could click on that mask, and down here I have curves. And since this one already has a curve applied, I could just modify the curve if I wanted to. But when I was done here, all I needed to do is click Done. And when I do, it updated that little XMP file. So when I returned here to Lightroom, I just needed to come down here to my um, film strip. And if this little icon wasn't there already with a little up pointing arrow, I just switched to a different picture. And that kind of makes it think I'm done with this image and would make it show up, but it's showing up for me. I click there and then it asked me this question and I just say, yeah, import those settings that I just changed in Adobe Camera Raw. And now I would get the change to come over here in Lightroom.